just God, it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so pace it. Rush pain, that things hate me, damn Life ain't gotta be hard, just keep it basic. It's amazing how good younger people are at selfies. Like, oh, I, so I, like I, if me and uh, Layla yeah. try to take I one know. of the family, yeah. we're like, yeah, this is, I like this. and then yeah. Yasmina just snatches, <laughs> like she gets angry, I know. snatches it's, it, and just just, <laughs> 30 seconds, I know. done. Gina and I normally don't have a problem finding things to talk about. Correct. So. Me so. too. I talk, I talk I to Gina all the time. Where does your granddaughter go to school? Uh, she'll be going to Chesapeake High School. Okay. This is our first year. Freshman? Yeah, yep. so she oh has orientation on the 20s. Oh, yeah? Yeah, or 25th. Oh, and now we're rivals because we're northeast side of Chesapeake. Um, so those two oh, okay. do not like, like each, each other. other. Hatfield uh, McCoys. Got it. She's a little nervous, you know. I bet. I said, it'll be all right. Yeah. I said, it, you know. I said, well, you have a whole week without the whole student body there to, like, figure yeah. it out. So I said, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. I was worried about... <laughs> Uh, my son last year going in his freshman year because he's mm -hmm. a little bit shy and things mm -hmm. of that nature and hey, school does a really good job of yeah. integrating and finding an activity like that right. really helped like he got involved in like best buddies and it was something small mm -hmm. but between that and like an AP class with right. a smaller group and good he just got his friends right away so yeah hello Monique how are you I'm wonderful You're outstanding wonderful? outstanding really outstanding yeah. I love being outstanding <laughs> All right, I do too. Gina, how are you? I'm well, Chad. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with a very good friend of ours <laughs> here at Fort Meade, uh, Miss Gina Stewart. What is it? Is it the general manager of the Baltimore Washington Partnership, or what is your official title? Executive so, uh, executive director of the BWI Business Partnership. I don't know the difference between those two, but executive director. Ricky sometimes calls me CEO, but um, yeah. the bylaws don't allow that, so I'm executive director. You're the boss, but then there's <laughs> yeah, okay. And then more important for this portion mm -hmm. of today is you're also the chairperson of the Fort Meade Community Covenant Council. Correct. Which is fantastic. So yeah. I'm honored to be here. Well, we're, uh, you're always here, which is probably why you're the chairperson. So tell us a little bit, you know, about BWI partnership a little bit, and then how you know you guys have a long-standing role and members of the, the community covenant. We can get into what that gets what that into means. A bit. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so I've been the executive director now for close to five years. Time is flying by, <laughs> and uh, the partnership hosts. Uh, different events for the business community to get together, to network, um, but also educational, uh, learn about transportation initiatives. Uh, you know, our, we have a young professional group to develop those next young leaders that we have and a women's leadership series. So lots of different ways to connect um, with others uh, to professionally grow. And as far as um, you know, the, the role of the partnership with the Covenant, we're considered one of the charter members of the Covenant, uh, which was started back in 2011. Oh um, and so uh, long ago. <laughs> I know, and uh, you know, I was going back through some records because it was you know uh, previous to my uh, executive directorship uh, at the partnership, yep. and um, it. Um, there's three charter members there. Um, it's the BWI Business Partnership, the Fort Meade Alliance, and the Central Maryland Chamber, which I believe back then was the West County Chamber. It was Chamber. the West County Chamber, yeah. So, oh, okay. you know, they had a branding change. And, um, and so each of us kind of brought a strength, I yep. guess you could say, to the, to the covenant. Um, and uh, the partnership's role seems to always kind of fall under that transportation piece. Yep. Uh, because we are considered a transportation management association here in Anne Arundel County. And uh, so we've, I guess, through the covenant um, and being uh, supporters of the Fort Meade community, you know, help to uh, get people to the table to widen 175, Route 175, yep. Route 32. Yes. Um, that's going back uh, even further yep. back. Um, and Chad, you know, you know, we helped uh, connect the fort with Lyft yep. um, in order to help our service members be able to, you know, have other forms of transportation here on post. And, you know, I personally, along with other members of uh, my partnership staff, we serve in a lot of different transportation committees. 
Um, and I actually was appointed by uh, Governor Hogan to be on the Central Maryland uh, Transportation Planning Commission, and now I serve on that implementation team of that plan, which includes, you know, speaking up for the Fort Meade community, a, a, along with others, um, to help bring more uh, awareness to the growth here at the fort. Uh, yep. And knowing that, you know, with that comes, you know, more people, more cars, maybe hopefully some more buses to... Hopefully uh, more charging more, stations. Correct. That's a whole other <laughs> subject, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> that no. might be a, another podcast in the making. Yes. <laughs> that, yeah. And that, but that's the... Uh, oh, yes. That is a perfect example because, yes, so you, if everybody who does enjoy 175 being so expanded, you, we would not be there without the BWI partnership, but it really does exemplify. Like when we started the covenant, and you mentioned the charter members, mm -hmm. all three of those groups, we, it was Linda Green at the Linda time. Green, yes. All came with me with different, like, hey, we want to do this, and we want to do it this way. And then the Central Maryland, uh, you know, then West County, Central Maryland, Chamber, like, we want to do the exact same thing, but we want to do it this way. And then the Fort Meade Alliance would say, hey, we want to do the same thing, but we want to do it this way. Finally, it was like, well, why don't we all just come together as a region and then do the same thing, hopefully the same way, with our combined resources. And right, so exactly. That's, that's sort of how the covenant Exactly, came and about. I think, you know, there's, there's that strength in numbers, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a bigger voice yeah. uh, to be heard, and each of us kind of has, you know, kind of our niche um, and, you know, with, with Fort Meade Alliance and, and workforce and, and things that they do and then Central Maryland Chamber with the business community and, and helping with those types of things. Um, it, it's great that we were able to bring those strengths together and add to the council um, with many other members and I, I don't want to get in trouble uh, and <laughs> forget any of them. Um, state, but, federal? You know, we have state, federal, local. Um, um, you know, representatives as well as workforce development from Anne Arundel County, Howard County, uh, the, the Maryland uh, State Veterans Affairs Office, uh, the USO. Um, I mean, like I said, there's many, many others. So yeah. I, 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 It seems like all these groups got together for a lot of different things. Yes. But they never got together for our thing. But that's why I like when we meet every month. It's like, hey, it's it's not just now talking about Fort Meade. We end up finding out stuff about what everybody else is doing mm -hmm. all at the same time. But this, how many times have you done, how many times have you been chairperson now? Is this your this second? This is my second, yes. Oh, okay. My second term, I guess you could say. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. One year term? Yeah. Is one year term? They are. Yeah. So we um, rotate between those three charter members, mm -hmm. um, and we kind of start, it's calendar year, so okay. uh, my, my term will end at the end of this year. Okay. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of fortunate to be uh, part of uh, the event coming up. But we I thrive. Don't, you know, being around our, our members and our guests and the community and being on the post, and, you know, it was just really difficult. And for me personally, very difficult because I'm a very people person. Yes. Yep. So I I kind of went through withdrawal, yes. um, just sitting at my home going, and my I had a kitten then, now she's a big kitty, but, you know, yep. sitting right in my way, and I'm like, okay, you know. And I think that, um, to me, the way everybody has kind of come, I, I'm going to say come back together, mm -hmm. I feel that people do realize that, you know, that interaction in person mm -hmm. cannot take the place of a Zoom yeah. or a Teams or, you right. know, whatever you want to call it. Have you, found, <laughs> have you found making partnerships and doing community work like you do more effective now that you're getting back together? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think with... Um, you know, through our foundation, we do manage a couple of grant programs here. Yeah, in the talk region. a little bit about that. Um, you, and you keep so, us clean, or at least you try to keep. Yes, us we do. Our we do. Clean. We do. Uh, we uh, manage a roadside beautification uh, project, which is three mile radius uh, around the Round Mills Casino, which actually comes up to 175 yeah. mm -hmm. Reese Road, Severn Road. Uh, Ridge Road, um, and um, so we, we are in this area, and uh, our vendor, I'll give a shout out to uh, Fred Cobb at DMF Landscaping, uh, our um, contractor, 
uh, you know, we did all our numbers for FY23, and I guess it's 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 kind of sobering in, in one way, but uh, you know, forty probably close to forty five tons of trash. Jeez. Oh, wow. You know, in that year's time, in that three mile radius. Wow. Um, and so we've tried to partner to your point uh, it, it, I am getting there I trust me um, with community partners such as um, you know some of the local retails you know chick-fil-a and McDonald's Safeway etc but a great partnership was with the Mead cluster schools oh, yes. and we participated uh, both in the fall and in the spring fairs uh, this and past spring you know, we had our little campaign on our table uh, to wear a loper, uh, <laughs> who no longer is at the partnership. We miss her, but we have Shahrazad Agurta, who's doing a great job uh, okay. as our new director of community development. But teaching the children and the parents the causes and effects of litters and the solutions. Mm. And I think that yeah. there really needs to be a broader campaign out there about littering and, and how detrimental it is to the environment, to animals, to mm -hmm. humans. Um, and I just, you know, we're, we're hoping to bring that awareness uh, to folks. And, and hopefully we've learned that usually kids are very good at telling parents, you shouldn't do that. Right. So we're hoping, you know, to uh, grab the kids when they're young and say, you know, don't litter, <laughs> you know, use the recycle bin or use the trash, you right. know, this is what goes in recycle, this is what goes in trash. Um, and so we're hoping that, you know, those community partnerships, you know, kind of help the community at large, you know, mm -hmm. to benefit everybody. So when I was going over with Monique, like, hey, what, what is the covenant? Because everybody always asks me yes. mm -hmm. that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what do they do? So what you just described there and how you partnered with the schools and made that connection to come back to the read, that is a tangible. So when people ask me what the covenant does, I point to things like this, like, mm -hmm. hey, Individual organizations do their things that better the whole community, and that's where the covenant comes together. So exactly. opportunity to meet with schools, mm -hmm. get in a meeting, see how they go, and partnerships for, for where they go to. So um, you mentioned a little bit about the fall festival mm -hmm. coming up. Now, apparently, and I don't know if you heard, Monique just told us that they're looking at November. Okay, great. Yeah, because last year was November. But then in the spring, get all the organization, all the school groups out to, so they basically have a year to practice, because last year they had like a week to practice, and everybody like, well, why can't the junior <laughs> choir sing in tune? Well, because they've only been together a week. <laughs> so, <laughs> you want to give them a yeah, little bit more time credit, to do that. They right. were up there. They were, right. and it was yeah. nice. It was really nice. I really enjoyed the spring festival, so I'm looking forward to the fall festival. I do remember the table display for BWI, yeah, and um, it was really nice. People were drawn to it. They were, you know, asking questions. They were picking up the literature, all of that. So that's important. Yeah, so, and candy helps. Yes, yeah. candy. We had, candy. Uh, we had candy. Oh yeah, we had candy. Kids could have a piece of candy if they answered a question, and the questions weren't overly hard because we had the answers right there on the oh, table. Right. <laughs> and some of the kids were like. And their parents would go, you know, look, John, or look, Sue, you know, it's right there, you <laughs> know, and right. they'd read it to their, their child. And I'm like, that's what we want, you mm -hmm. know, get that family into not littering anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. why do you think, so I know from our perspective at the fourth, like, hey, to get the community together, all the resources, when I talk to Colonel Sapp or incoming command is like, hey, you need to look at the off-post community as our community because that's where we get resources from. What is the benefit for the external organizations to partner with the fort? You know, I think, you know, the fort is one of the largest employers here, especially in our central Maryland region, I'll call it. And mm -hmm. um, I think that your mission is important to the country, quite frankly, but, you know, to us, you know, we're lucky enough to have you right here. Right. Um, and I think for, um, you know, organizations like myself and, and others, I think, you know, being able to have that partnership um, with, with folks that are doing an important mission and feel that we're a part of that, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of hard to put it into words. I, I feel like it's more of a feeling like... Mm -hmm. We are helping 
Hmm. You know, Fort Meade and, and, you know, obviously NSA and Cybercom, you know, with, with their mission by, you know, doing things that maybe they can't do because, you know, they are a government agency. Right. Yeah. And, and we're not. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're able to do some things. And I, I think it's just kind of feeling proud to be a part of it. So we, mm -hmm. we get up every year. We get to talk to the mm -hmm. Anne Arundel and usually the Howard County mm -hmm. delegations. Got yeah. to talk a little bit about. It was nice this year. We got to help talk a little bit about the airport, which yeah, is and its importance to the region as well. <laughs> so um, finding those opportunities so that we're stronger together. I think exactly. Is. Yeah. Hey there, listeners. Before we dive into the next exciting segment, let's take a moment to hear from our command information chief, Chuck Yang, about the latest upcoming events on the Fort Meade garrison. Jazz enthusiasts, mark your calendars. Get ready to swing to the beats of the U.S. Army Field Band as they bring the Jazz Ambassadors, America's Big Band, to Constitution Park on Saturday, August 19th. This musical spectacular promises a diverse range of melodies that are bound to captivate the entire family. Remember, the concert is open to all DOD ID card holders, family members, and their guests. Exciting news for oral health. Starting Monday, August 21, the Docs Dental Office will be opening its doors at the Fort Meade Main Exchange. Conveniently located on post, they'll provide top-notch family and general dental care. Are you looking for employment opportunities? Fort Meade has a world of career options waiting for you. From firefighters to security guards, engineering technicians to AFES associates, and child and youth service roles. There's something for everyone. Don't miss out on our ongoing job fairs throughout the year. For more details, head to the USA Jobs and connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and other social media platforms. Well, that's it for this week, but I'll be back soon with more essential updates that matter to the Fort Meade community. Until next time. Well, let's get back to the covenant signing. Okay. I know yeah. that the garrison commander is going to be signing. Who else is going to sign the covenant? Well, I think, John. Monique, we have a um, who's who yes. of lots of uh, dignitaries and federal and state and local officials, yeah. uh, some of the business community um, as well. And um, I... I know we're kind of finalizing some of those uh, things, so I won't call out by name. Again, not to get myself in trouble, <laughs> to forget somebody. Mm -hmm. But it really is a who's who yeah. of, of the community here. And it really helps to sim, you know, symbolize a pledge, right, what, that we're kind of repledging our support uh, to the community at, here at Fort Meade. It, and it's work. It, it's, you know what I mean? It's like you sign it, and then, you know, of course, the covenant gets together on a monthly basis for the most part. So I think it just brings back to the forefront and to the focus mm -hmm. what the covenant's about, right? right. And what our charge is. Yes. And um, I, I think it's great that, you know, we're, we're able to do that every couple years as a new commander comes in. I, I'm sorry for Colonel Nyland that we, we yeah. couldn't make that one happen. <laughs> but for the most part. Um, yeah, pretty much since yeah. Rothstein. And yeah. then I think, though, though, this year we're also, so the Covenant's actually our work. It's being recognized. Mm -hmm. We're a great defense community, That's according right. to the great. Association mm -hmm. of Defense mm -hmm. Communities. There's exactly. Five of them in the... Department oh, of Defense, and exactly. we're one of them. So that's pretty impressive, if you it ask is. me. It is. Oh. I mean, we've won. So how, I mean, this makes okay. Maybe I'll stump mouth. you. How how many installations are there in hundreds? Hundreds. Oh yes. well, there's at least ninety eight Army installations. Okay. Oh, okay. But ADC covers Every Navy, day. Air Force. Right. So you're talking hundreds, and I think there's some an installation, you know, overseas. So you're talking mm -hmm. a couple hundred. Wow. But they base this off of what the community does and mm -hmm. the impact, you know, from whether it's the school grants to, mm -hmm. you know, Friends of Me to 175 working mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. advocacy we've done for that. So apparently that we're getting recognized with that. I think yeah. you get a flag or something. Yeah, we do. We do. And, you know, I think another 
key piece, and I, I do want to give a shout out and a thank you to the Fort Meade Alliance for putting yes. that nomination forward uh, yeah. for that project. Um, and um, what an honor it is! I, you know, one of five. I mean. When Monique and I talked about yes. it, and I'm like, I, I don't know. And she's like, well, I know the answer. I'm like, okay, what is it? And she said, it's only five. And I'm like, wow. You know, like, I, yeah, I know. it really brought it, it home mm -hmm. of what an accomplishment it is. And and I think a lot of that, too, um, was, was how Fort Meade Alliance helped to uh, renovate Coon Hall into yes. the new Education and Resiliency Center. I mean... Wow, I mean that was eleven years in the making there. So kudos to, uh, you know, that those people of the covenant and yeah. Fort Meade Alliance members and and well, the covenant uh, bring in the resources because all those things that populate those services right. from Veterans Affairs to the state services, mm -hmm. getting them all together. I mean that's right. the covenant. But it makes me so happy that you mentioned Fort Meade Alliance because when the covenant first started, I mean you guys were okay. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. In regards to but your relationship to Fort Meade in <laughs> right. their name. The relationships were always fun because it was oh, doing things. Everybody wanted to do good, but there was always a little bit of competition. Who <laughs> I don't want to say who likes us best, so that's what one commander said. He's like, well, who do we like best? It's like, well, no, we got to like everybody <laughs> yeah. best. But the other organization wouldn't mention the other. But now, I mean, you know, I, I at least feel from my position looking in that mm -hmm. – those organizations have, you all have worked better together and have seemed to be more willing so. to work together, yeah, which is I good. Think, and I, I do. I think we all know our strengths. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, we're here to support each other. And I just think it's such a great project and, and was so honored to be at the ribbon cutting um, this past November and walk around the space and... I, you know, I think it's awesome that service members have that resource oh, to, yes. you know, for educational classes, cooking classes, yep. and, mm -hmm. and you know, being able to have resources for wellness and, and community services, mm -hmm. you know, right there here on post. Um, it, it's such a great, you know, such a great um, gem, I would say. And, like, again, I know how hard... Uh, the Fort Meade Alliance uh, worked to get that completed and, and all the kind of, it was, it was, I think it was kind of one of its kind, yeah, uh, no, which, the, which well, made, it, well, made it, it a little interesting years, so yeah, um, was, uh, to, wow. to do. Um, but, you know, that's a testament to the Covenant and, and Fort Meade Alliance. You know, they kept, you know, they didn't just throw their hands up and say, oh, this is just too, too much trouble. This is yeah. too hard. You know, and then of course construction costs went up during that time. Well, COVID, well, yeah. that was COVID. Uh, you know, <laughs> and so you know, raising you know, I think it was over five million dollars. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, in a interesting time. But you, um, met, you mentioned not that. giving up. That's one thing that has always, I've always been impressed with. The community has never like stopped. Mm -hmm. Like there was a down tail, you know, after. Afghanistan and when people went out like you talk to other installations mm -hmm. and their community support didn't dry up but just they didn't have as much because for whatever reason we mm -hmm. the military came out of the limelight a little bit so support from outside the installation seemed to dwindle a little that's never happened here yeah and, and I think when you know back in when was that no don't remember so I won't put a date out but you know when BRAC right and oh yeah and so, um, you know, having our federal delegation partners, right, uh, you yeah. know, our senators, U.S. senators and congressmen, um, you know, in our corner, you know, when yeah. I say our, Fort Meade <laughs> corner, you know, to make sure, you know, that, that you guys were still here and, and look at you look at you guys now compared to <laughs> we're, yeah, we're back big then. Business. So, you know, having... Having those relationships, you know, mm -hmm. because let's face it, Fort Meade is a big part of this community yes. for a lot of different purposes right. and a lot of different businesses and a lot of different things. So I couldn't imagine if you guys weren't here. What right. it would be well, like. the partnership you talk about, Fort Meade, mm -hmm. the casino, mm -hmm. the airport, mm -hmm. do you think the community has done a good job leveraging those massive entities in? for the betterment of the region? I think so, I do. I think that, you know, they're, they're first off, 
they're all big employment centers. Right. Um, and, you know, the airport, thank goodness, has come back very strong mm-hmm. after COVID. You know, they were shut down. They, they couldn't do oh, it much right. of nothing. Um, and so to, you know, see them, you know, still thriving and growing mm-hmm. and, you know, what their expansion plans are, are planned for the next few years as well. And now so. Paul's the secretary. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. He was. Uh, he what comes used around, to be goes around. Yeah, I know. <laughs> People never leave here. <laughs> but you know, that's what's so nice. You know, they call it small tomorrow for a reason. So we want to get back to our ceremony. Yes. I know that there will exciting. be speakers. I know that Colonel Sat will speak during mm-hmm. the uh, ceremony. Are there any other speakers that you? Well, you know, I happen to know one. Okay. Me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yours truly. Yeah. Uh, but no, I have a small speaking part, um, just kind of, you know, letting people know um, kind of the, the mission of the covenant, just kind of a, a brief overview. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chad, I think you're going to MC us. Uh, I think I'm going to, yep, yeah, I'm going right. to MC. The two of you. Okay. Yeah. And then who's signing? So you get to sign. The covenant, covenant S- chairperson gets to sign. Correct. Who's I get this is my for, first one I get to sign. That's right. That's right. Very excited. <laughs> Me too. Who's signing for the partnership? So our new chair, Bonnie Hinkle, mm-hmm. um, from Corporate Office Properties Trust. So she nice. became our new chair July 1, mm-hmm. and she's looking forward to being there and being a, one of the signers. So, Do you find it as ridiculous as I do about the Army always celebrating things with cake? And this is coming from somebody who loves frosting. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> I love cake frosting. But is it not a little ridiculous that we always go to cake? No, no. I, I'm okay. not, you know, it's funny. I'm not a big cake eater. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm more like the brownie cookie pie mm, kind of thing. Um, I love a cookie. But I think cake symbolizes, I don't know. I just feel it's, like. It's a it's a staple in events in exactly. terms of, like you know, it's all about the celebration. That's right. right. So cake is the symbol yeah. of Really? You know yeah, what? yeah. We, we're, Monique and, and I sense, just made that a, a rule. <laughs> okay, hey, I'm always feeling bad about it. So but cake yeah. is good. So cake Your is cake good. is excellent. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I cake mean, is cake good. is excellent, but it fits for ceremonies. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Because it's that symbol. That's all it does. Uh-huh. And and you know we're going to host this um, ceremony at Smallwood Hall. Yep. Um, and because um, August is smiling, <laughs> because August is hot. And we never know when there's a thunderstorm, right. That's because true. I can tell you, it's, it was looking dark on my way here today. So, yeah. you know, an afternoon yeah. thunderstorm would really just in case yeah, make the cake messy. Mm-hmm. It so would. So I think it would. you know, and humidity. Yeah. yeah. So you know, from the covenant, are, are there any events that you want to talk about? Any upcoming? I know that we already discussed the fall festival mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. the uh, Me Cluster Schools. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else, friends of me? I know. Um, I think that, um, well, you know, because of our diverse group of the covenant yeah. members, you know, there's um, several different types of events. Um, I know, you know, for example, the the BWI Business Partnership will have their signature breakfast yeah. with M. Dot uh, Secretary Paul Wiedefeld on September 21st at the Westin. Um, but I know, you know, Central Maryland Chamber, um, and actually they're um, having a joint networking uh, mm-hmm. breakfast uh, coming up, <clears throat> excuse me, on the, I want to say the 15th, I think, 14th mm-hmm. or 15th. Now, the normally, are these events open to the public, or are they are just kind of <coughs> centralized, like invited think, guests? Yeah, no, I think most of us, um, you know, have member rates to attend, mm-hmm. and then, you know, a non-member or a guest rate to attend. Yes. And, you know, other members of the Covenant, such as, you know, Anne Arundel County Workforce, Howard mm-hmm. County Workforce, mm-hmm. you know, they, they host job fairs. Yes. No, no. Um, educational training, mm-hmm. um, which is always open. Um, you just usually have to register, so they have an idea of how many people you know will will be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you know the USO does uh, yep. a lot of nice things, the good events. Um, and so it's and it's, I know we that have a nice the Fort Meade Alliance is planning their annual gala. Correct. Yeah, in so October. I just got yes. that information the yep. other day. And that's a that's a nice um, nice really nice event, a large event. Maryland uh, State of Veterans Affairs. That's right. Um, you know, they have a lot of uh, programs and events uh, for veterans and, and active service members. Yep. And I think we do have Secretary, correct, Anthony Woods? We do. Um, he's, I think yes. he's one of our uh, speakers and yes. uh, signers as well at the Covenant signing. So 
wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Well, thank so. you. The fact is all of our organizations do different things. Yes. And we are working at least to get those events out. I think probably the networking portion of it is as important as anything else. Just yeah. Mm-hmm. Finding out what everybody's doing. <laughs> well, okay. Well, Gina, it's always good to catch up with you. Absolutely. And we really do. Th- I, I will tell you from every, from myself as a public affairs officer, but re- you know, for every commander we come through, they always ask me what the covenant does. But by the end of it, they they do. They have a pretty good idea. And every commander, if you listen, even when you listen to Colonel Nyland, to Colonel Sprague, their going away speech, and this is probably ninety percent of their accomplishments that their senior leaders rip lit, read off mm-hmm. comes from something that was based off of the community, and that's yeah. really what it, what it comes up yeah. for. And that's do in part to your organization and your leadership in the covenant yeah, as a whole. I think it, it is. It's it's just a very committed group of people mm-hmm. that want to see Fort Meade succeed, which we know in turn makes the state succeed, yep. Anne Arundel County succeed, Howard, mm-hmm. you know, just the whole region as a whole. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's, it's nice to be a part of that group. And I'm Thank, thank you, you so much for coming to no, our little you. studio. Always good thank to you see so you much. And get out it's of the office. So thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell Ronnie and I will. Cynthia, hello. I will. Ronnie I will. will be at the signing. He will. Yes. Yes. He is. You got to tell speaking. Cynthia though. So Cynthia, for all of you uh. who don't know, <laughs> Cynthia works at the BWI Partnership. She likes my wife way more than she likes me, and she <laughs> never passes up an opportunity to tell me that. So when I go to register an event, where's Layla? I don't want to talk to you. So, and Layla's fantastic. Everybody knows she's That's the better right. half of what we got. But I don't, I'm don't. i coming in there. I need to be confident going into a meeting. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Gina, if people are not able to attend... How else can they see the signing of these covenants? He is hilarious. Actually, if they log into the Fort Meade Facebook page, yeah. it will be live streamed. And mm-hmm. remember, it's on August the 24th, which is a Thursday, from 1 to 3 p.m. at Smallwood Hall. Thank you for listening to Fort Meade Declassified. This is the end of our episode. We thank each and every one of you for listening. We thank our special guest, Gina Stewart, who is the chair uh, chairperson for the Fort Meade Covenant. And we also want to remind everyone that although it's scheduled from 1 to 3 p.m., it's not going to be, it's going to be about an hour and 15, 20 minutes. Thank you. Life is just a marathon, so pace is okay. Fresh pain that things hate me, dang.